Hello. Today I wanted to talk about um, being who we are and accepting who we are versus being who we want to be and not accepting our authenticity or imperfections, right? So there's there's a huge difference between that and and there's vital aspects to when we first step into understanding ourselves and accepting all of ourselves that sometimes we do need to have teachers to show us different ways than what we've been taught and conditioned to live in which is is vital but sometimes we can get locked into a certain way of spirituality or um, connection or um, that soul connection looking a certain way so for me i um I was, I had some interesting teachers, some very good teachers and some very not so good teachers. In a minute. Um, mm. And all of them taught me so much and continue to teach me so much. Um, but one of the things that I kept attracting to me or I kept going to um, were teachers that didn't have kids. That's fine. However, um, <laughs> thanks, Charlie. Um, I've got children. And so it was beautiful to work out where I sat in all this. Um, and I will never, never take away everything that I've learned. But I've come around full circle. I feel like I've come back to a beginning again. Like a, there's an ending and I've come back to beginning. And I guess it's a spiral anyway. But I'm including my kids in... in um, in everything I do now, I'm merging the two worlds, the seen and the unseen, the unseen, together to become normal. Normal, what is that? But to become um, a constant in my life, right? To, to weave the mysteries with the everyday mundane stuff. And why would that be any different with my videos that I make? So, come here. Um, I've got a son who loves being on camera. Do you want to say who you are? Without being Hi. Consistent? This is Charlie. He's seven. And he's obviously reading a book <laughs> that I'm reading. Um, uh, it's about mothering our boys, which is really cool. Um, Maggie Dent is revolutionary with um, supporting the masculine. All right, so supporting men um, become more empowered and, and it can also start, obviously, when, when they're quite young. Uh, see you, Charlie. Thanks for joining us. You want to say bye? Oh, say bye. I'm still in it. You're still in it? Here you are. All right. I'll come out in a minute. Hi, I'm Charlie. <laughs> thank you, Charlie. <laughs> and I like wearing hats. Thank you. You look great. Of course I do. Yes, thank you. Um, what do they say? You should never work with kids or animals. You just, you can't control it. Um, so anyway, so what, what we've, what we've, um, what I was talking about was, um, being who you are instead of being who we want ourselves to be. So we, it comes down to like self-acceptance and that's huge. That's huge because someone else's life and the way they live might look so much better than ours, might look so much, you know, more glamorous um, or whatever it is or easier. Um, but we work with what we've got now. We work with what we can have right now and, um, and we do the best we can with that. Uh, and so for me, I was spiritually bypassing a lot of um you know what i have here now instead of being so present and doing the work um i i essentially was going away from it and even when i come back um physically into the family the parts of me were still elsewhere right thinking that my lessons weren't going to come here but the divine works in amazing ways in that it provides us lessons with wherever we're at, we're, whether we're 
overseas by ourselves or in a family unit as long as we are looking to improve ourselves to know ourselves deeper to learn the lessons that we we we're here to learn you know the soul um, lessons that we're here to learn um then then we're gonna get these these things come up and challenge us um and and for me um a reality is that i've got two gorgeous um yeah they're pretty full on but they're gorgeous boys and um you know this is part of um, my path is balancing out um everything in my life so they won't make an appearance every time i do a video but that was a good example i suppose of um of what what I was doing um, and yeah and I think that that happens a lot in in being here and now that that we can look at someone else as a model and choose um, to follow or um, uh, choose to escape rather to be in the life that you have and make changes and evolve it, uh, being grounded in our approach to to knowing thyself and, and going through the motions and learning the lessons that we are given, you know, um, instead of not being so present. And this can be a great example even if you are at work and... Um, you're challenged by personalities at work and um, or even being at work isn't doesn't feel so aligned with you but you still need to keep that job obviously we've got to eat so if you're in that situation it's less than perfect it's less than ideal however you can still do the very best you can to remain aligned to to yourself right um So this is all good and well when we're talking about this sort of thing. Um, you know, stay aligned to self, um, be where you're at, make the changes that need to be made. You need to, oh, there's a lot of shadow work that needs to be done. You need to understand what it is that makes you tick. Um, you know, relationships will teach you so much. Um, with that as well and you know a lot of us are in lockdown and so we get to see how this all plays out as well um, you know with with others you know our shadows reflected back at us and it's mirrored back um, it's just an amazing time if you can keep coming within finding space for self to come back within and um and look at what thoughts are happening um and if they're helpful thoughts or if they're obviously less than ideal they're not helping um you know in these situations um so and it comes back to judging as well. Um, so, you know, we we can judge people for having outside of us, for, for appearing to have it all sorted, for appearing successful, to, to appearing to be a certain way. And, and then judging ourselves as not. So... There's a level of self-acceptance that comes when we can acknowledge that other person in your life and he or she's there for a reason. But bring it back. Um, bring it back here and, and bring the lessons that, um, that that person models or that you need more of in your life. I've had a beautiful role model that showed me how to live from um, soul alignment um, 
in the feminine, you know, soul alignment, um, in your gifts and your passion. And, and you know, that's um, much more as well. And so I was doing one step and it was where I was at in that I was, um, and I was watching and learning, but I was ready. I wasn't ready yet, but now I am stepping into that next part, which goes apply it to everything that it already exists in your life. In the midst of all the changes, I'm making a hell of a lot of changes in my life. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of changes. And in the midst of, midst of all of these changes comes the weaving of those mystical truths of um, knowing self deeper. You know, I'm ready now to put everything I've learned out, you know, from, from watching and being taught how to do certain things to turning it back on self. And, um, and I think that's a vital step that when we're ready, it's divine timing as well. Um, when we're ready, we take. So it's like the two opposites come with this, right? So some people explain that's like the um, dark night of the soul, right? Or the ego, depending on how you talk about it. On one hand, and there's just so much light on the other. So much consciousness comes. It's like you've got both coming at you. And, um, and it's really vital to create that space for yourself to be able to um, allow that to happen, allow both. So, you know, we, we, there's fears that could arise, right? And to watch them, acknowledge them, understand them, um, feel it. And then you have the consciousness there that weaves its magic and is weaving everything beautifully together in this gorgeous tapestry of your life it's there as well you know and so it's it's a it's just a beautiful beautiful thing you know come back to um to really accepting where we're at those points of our lives that aren't going to change dramatically right um, we always have choice, obviously, but but for me, I'm not going to change the fact I've got two children. So that is like a core thing that's not going to change. And and my life is shifting, is shifting to help support that. And in a way that I've never done before, in a, in a way that I've stepped away from um, in a way, the responsibility, relying on other to do that for me. And so, yeah, this is vital turning around. So it's an interesting thing to look at is how um, we we do that. How, how um, in your life, whatever that is for you, what's, what's real for you, what you can't, what you're not ready to let go of or what you, you will not let go of in your life and must stay. And so therefore, how can you merge your practice with that thing that's staying? And so I'll give you an example. I um, A few days ago, I was sitting and meditating in my normal spot and, um, and I was next to the heater. It was beautiful. And Charlie, my seven-year-old, came in and um, he was talking to me. And instead of going, <laughs> quiet, out, you come back later or whatever, which is something that I almost probably would have done about a year ago, I just went and he sat on my lap and together we meditated. Now it wasn't for even five minutes. It may have been for two minutes, who knows. But during that time, there was a beautiful um, sacredness to it that I haven't experienced with him for such a long time. So there's an example. It's not perfect. And I had in my mind of how it looked or should have looked. And, um, and, and I had half an hour in my mind. I was doing an inquiry meditation. I needed an answer to something. 
I needed to go behind, beyond my mind. I was ready, cross-legged, sitting there, just about to go into my um, stillness part to really connect in, and that's when the beautiful Charlie entered. And it's all divine timing as well, because obviously um, that intimacy was almost the answer I needed um, for that moment of just being able to have my arms around him and him leaning back into me as we were meditating together. And it doesn't have to look a certain way. Um, so whatever it is in your life, if it keeps coming up, you know, um, I think flexibility is huge. You can just move with it. Just move with it. It doesn't have to look a certain way or be a certain way. Um, because the benefits from it, we don't know. We don't know. Um, so there, there are some more things that I wanted to touch on. Uh, so, you know, we've got the role models kind of covered. Don't lose ourselves with that. Um, apply everything to your life when you're ready, merge. So bring it back, bring the lessons back and merge it really um, beautifully with that which already exists. So um, if you don't have children but you, you work, all that workplace is going to be magic, you know, whatever the situation is. So, yeah, just turning it back to self. Um, and, and really having that commitment to self and to soul. Right. really having that first before um, stepping into we're all connected out there, which is a, um, a sacred law and absolute truth. But to be here in this human form, you know, it, it's the honouring of um, being here. It's the honouring of, um, of that which means you commit to that which is in you, which is beyond. So the universe that is in you, the soul connection and depth beyond these words that I can spit out, right? It's connecting to that first. And we've got that in us and all around us. So committing, committing, committing to that. Um... And then from that, we understand that there's more in play in our lives than just the physical, because we can feel it. There's an energy in us. We feel that sensation. And can I word this? So in order to get that, in order to, in order for these changes to stick, uh, and for for that um, for that energy and living more from the soul and connecting, plugging in, it's like oh, I just got a beautiful image. Okay, so it's like plugging in a house into the power source in the street, right? So you're the power source for yourself, right? You're the power source, and so how to plug in this with what you're doing in your life. Like if, uh, my children, you know, really plugging in there and um, or work, really plugging in there, which is what I'm doing as well um, with my businesses, really plugging in there um, from that soul place and, um, and connecting, you know, and trusting. And so it's, it's not, oh, this is my practice away from everyone. And, um, you know, and, and I need time to self, don't get me wrong. I love that. But, but I was doing that a hell of a lot and, and, and avoiding um, being seen in that and truly allowing myself to be who I am. So, yeah, stillness is really needed and is vital. In order for the you to understand or be more conscious and see to work with, um, to work with that power source, um, 
and spread it through wherever you are, like taking that moment to feel where you're at um, and how much voltage is going to come through. You can feel it generally um, and allowing, allowing. It takes a lot of courage to do that um, and a lot of self-esteem to back yourself to do that as well. But something we, we must do if you're on the path, you must, whether you're not, like it's fine if you're not ready to take that step, absolutely fine. And you know within yourself if you are, to bring this across the board in everything that you do. Um, and hold yourself, like using that integrity and holding yourself to that commitment to soul above all else. Above all else, that's what you're serving, um, is that heightened vibration um, that's within you. And not to say that then you judge those parts that aren't a high vibration. No, accepting them. Accepting the lower vibrational um, aspects of self then makes you also rise in vibration. And that's a universal law as well. Like the that which you accept has no power. You don't run from it anymore. You're not as exhausted. You don't go to the brain as much and you don't go thinking, oh, you know, um, beating yourself up. That there is no charge anymore, no negative charge to that. There just is energy coming and going. And so that stillness helps us to integrate and helps us to see and then, um, and then just allow, like, this is, this is who I am at the moment. This is who I, this is what is here. No good, bad, whatever. It's just here. There's no charge, you know. So, um, yeah, who, who we want ourselves to be, who we think we should be, um, and, and who we actually are, are two very different things. Um, and I think it's just such a beautiful thing to embrace who we actually are. This, it's so effortless. There's no need to think. You just be. So whether you're quirky, whether you're extremely sexual, um, you know, a musical geek, um, I'm using all these examples of myself, um, no matter what it is, it doesn't have power if you can go, yep, that's, that's true. That's true of me. I'm not running away. Oh. And that leaves me open as well to be able to um, be the parent I want to be. And also merge the invisible and the mystic with and that, and that heightened vibration, let's face it, the, the truth, the vibration of truth and effortlessness, bringing that through um, is just so beautiful as well. <sighs> so I'm not sure if you got anything from this. I hope you did. I enjoyed talking <laughs> about it and I will see you next time. I'm sending so much love. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye for now.